What's up everybody? Day two scrape. Here's our read. Same read, little one on it from last time. First thing will be to ream it. Completely dried out. All the soaks will go over. So I'm just going gently, you know, you don't want to push it too far in right away. Pretty good. Okay. Can use a little diamond. This is from Nexus Woodwind. It's like 30 bucks. It's great. Beautiful handle. All that. You can pay. Let's see, at least six times more, I think. Last time I checked for the fancy version from Europe. But this will work. Okay, I'm gonna soak it. Make sure the whole reed gets into the water. And while I'm doing that, let's go over again what I'm gonna be doing today. So in my day two, looking for a few different things. Okay, so the first one, if my iPad will wake up. Does it go down? So all this means is your read, the question I'm asking is, is the read going in this vertical plane? Well, that's new. Okay, so vertical, or is your read all sort of existing in this one horizontal plane? A read like that would kinda, kinda just look like this. You know, this. There's some curvature there, but basically that's all in this horizontal plane. So we don't want that. We want to read up and down in this vertical plane. Okay, so that's the first thing I'll be looking for. After that, don't forget to save the rails. You might be tempted to make the read really vertical, but save the rails, okay? so. The side view, here's your spine, here's your rail, here's your channel. Um, you want to have a good thick amount right over there, okay? So keep that thick. If you do this, you're going to have a really stuffy dark reed and it's going to die in like two or three days. So don't do that. These are kind of a dichotomy. You need it to both go down and you need to save as much rail as you can. Okay, so that's that's hard. Making reads is hard. Here's the side view of that, saving the rails. You wanna make sure you can see this thickness here, okay? You wanna make sure this is visible all the way down, okay? So make sure of that, don't kill the rails but do make sure the read is three dimensional. Make sure it goes down. All right, and then the one test we're gonna be doing is what I call the low B flat test. So you're just gonna play 16 low B flats in a row with a tuner. Da 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 da. And the goal here is, not the goal, the requirement is you can't miss any notes. So that's a test of the response. Is it responsive enough? Is it free enough? Or is the read still too heavy? Okay, so on the one hand, you gotta get that. And then on the other hand, every single note has to be in tune. And so that's the first point. Is it strong enough to hold the pitch? So you could just smash the first wire and your whole read might look like a plank, like we discussed. This read will play test number two but test number one, it won't play. Now on the other hand, the read like this, whoops, I don't want that, with no rails whatsoever, this one, actually let me erase all this before I lose my undoes here. Okay, so this read though, it's certainly gonna be strong enough to hold the pitch, but it's not gonna be free enough to get all the notes out, okay? So again, we have a dichotomy. You need it to be both 
strong enough to hold the pitch down and free enough to get all 16 notes. All right, so let's see how this works. Day two, switch this over, some more read. Here's what we're starting with. It's pretty open. I have a feeling I'm gonna have to close it. Although maybe that's just because it hasn't been played. I left this about a week. Got some slipping right here. You can see the two blades are kind of slipped. I don't love that. That's gonna actually make the reed play as if it's stronger. That's okay. At the end of the world, you can see the slipping again here. I don't remember it being that slipped in the last video, but maybe it slipped when we reamed it. Okay, so let's try it. So what? So definitely having some response issues. And it's quite sharp. Okay, so it plays pretty nicely everywhere except the low register. So that makes me think maybe something's going on in the back. It also could just be the tip is not finished enough. I'm also feeling that. How am I, how do I, why do I think that? I don't have a great reason. Um, you know, make hundreds of reads and then you'll have an intuition. For it. But, you know, if I had to say here, let's see. I mean, the back, low notes often come from the back, and it often comes from the reed is too hard to play them. But the reed doesn't feel too hard anywhere else, okay? And the tip, why am I thinking the tip? Because it doesn't really respond well yet. So that might be something in the tip. Now, the response could also just come from there's too much cane on the reed. And that could also explain why it's sharp. So those are all the things swirling around in my head. I'm going to look at the read, look if there's anything strange in the tapers, okay? So nothing strange. Got some pretty good rails there. See the little triangle go all the way down. The read does look relatively flat. So there's not a lot of difference from here over to here. It's kind of a two by four. I'm gonna see if I just get kind of in there, make that lower than over here, kind of make this into a spine, more of a spine, and that's gonna help a lot. Now again, very easy over here to get a too high of an angle and you could destroy the rails in one pass. Okay, so I'm scraping over here as low as I can be. So I'm working in the back. 
That's going to free it up. It'll make the read less hard feeling. You know, and the response was fine elsewhere. It just wasn't good in the low register. So that combination makes me wonder if the vibrations are getting all the way to the back. But I come up here and I see, you know, that doesn't really take it. That's pretty much the same, except the same, it's in the same plane as this. So I'd like this to be down here in a lower plane below the spine. So I'm going to make it thinner. Of course, I'm mindful. If I taper through here, this still needs to be thicker than this, okay? So I taper it all the way out to the corner. I was using the front edge of the file, so really I was only scraping right in there. Have to let me know if this is adequately zoomed in. I mean, I could even go further. I wonder what something like this would look like. Almost so zoomed in, you can barely see what I'm doing, but let's try it. Okay. This side looks better. See, I've got a little bit of lifting. You can see that corner is barely lifting. It's too thin right in there. Too thin right in there on this side without lifting too. And as much as I'd rather not use a file with a Prop 65 warning, these files are better. So I'm going to use it. This side looks more finished than the other side. going on either side the spine looks a little bit wide here once again it's not the most greedy So I'm just scraping this side region. And see, I'm not even going all the way to the rail. Just getting the side. Here's something. This kind of thing doesn't really go down. In there, I don't know if you can see that. As I look down this corridor, I say, oh, that doesn't really go down. So I'm making it thinner. All right, so now, now I have a corridor here all the way down from the back. There's no bump right here anymore. This is just in line for all the other diagonals, okay? Let's see what else we've got here. Zoom it out to get the whole read in there. Hmm. This middle area in between the spine and the side this looks like it didn't really curve. Okay. All of this is assumed that the middle is good. I can check that with the dial in one, one second here, but middle is sort of the last place you want to 
work. Similar thing here, and what I'm scraping is whatever you want to call this. It's just sort of it's just sort of thick in the sense that you know it doesn't go down again. We need middle, we need spine, channel, rail in that 3D architecture, and it's just not quite there yet in certain spots. So none of this is formulaic scraping. This is all scraping by based on what I see. Just trying to make the papers look good. I want to know more about this taper, but the plaque's a little bit on this side. You can see there's more over here. So I'm going to just shift it the other way. Now that's getting thin, actually. I don't love how thin that rail is, but it is what it is. And now I see this comes down nicely, but this does not. So I don't know if you can see that. That's not quite going down from here down to there. And considering the fact that this reed is just relatively flat, struggling to get it to be 3D, that probably means this was the reed from you know, if you have an oval tube, there's a reed right here that's arched. There's a reed right here that is flat. You know, another arched reed and another flat reed. So this is probably one of the flat reeds. And so it's harder to get the thing to have that 3D structure we want. I think some people intentionally only use either the curved part or the flat part. Um, and that's if you get four reeds out of a piece of tube cane anyway. Sometimes you don't. But that's what I would suspect with this reed. It's just really hard to get it to be 3D. Just want to make sure that goes down, down, down. Okay something Let's see what the tip looks like now tip still has almost no diamondy quality to it so that makes me think there's either too much in the sides or the channels you want there to just be a smidge of diamondy you don't want to completely collapse diamond but you also don't want like a brand new reed has this shape so you don't want that the reed that we're working on currently is a little much towards the hamburger tip shape. So, yeah, let's see what this does. Uh, give you the tuner again. It still feels hard to play. So I'm betting now the middle is too thick, but let's see what this plays like. Uh, uh, uh. And notice the low B flat is a flat actually. 
Oh no, that's true. I just can't read it from this far. So I can't play 16 of those in a row without missing. Or I could play 16 sharp. So I got all 16, but three's not in tune. Okay, so all that means is there's still too much cane and probably now the middle is too thick. So let me check that with the dial. Bring this all the way out. Can I zoom? Can I get this out of here? Let's see. Yeah, it's pretty good. All right, so here's the first third. There we go, 16, that's good for day two. Here we got about 23, that's a little thick for day two. 38, we've got about 24, it's okay. Next one, we got about 28, that's okay. Final one, we got about 31, that's quite thick. That's about four over right there. Okay, and the very back. 34, that's good. 35, 36, yeah, that's good. Okay, the other side, first eighth. 16, that's good. 23, got a little room there. Same on the other side. Next one, 25, that's great. Next one, 28, that's about two over where I want it for the final, so that's okay. And next one, 30, that's about three over where I want it for the final. So we could work there again. And about 33, that's a little low, but that's fine. 34. It's also, this dial isn't really meant to be used flat, so it may not be the most accurate, but. Okay, so we still just got too much in the middle. That's great. It's actually great news because that just means we can take some off. And that's going to free the read up. It's going to bring down the pitch. And let's see, does that fit? Yeah, that's pretty good. So it's going to free the read up. It's going to bring down the pitch because we're taking off cane. And also because especially this one here, as we work in this front, let's say half of the read, we're actually making the the back to front taper steeper so that's going to hold the pitch down even more okay so we've got things that are going to give us response it's going to lower the pitch and it's going to hold the pitch down more perfect that's exactly what we want right side left side right side left side notice those two angles i'm never flat. I'm always at this side or this side. Scraping up to the spine and away from the spine. And now that I look at it, I can see exactly what the dial told me, which was it's just a little thick right in those two spots. Once again, I'm not just scraping blindly. I'm responding to what I see in the cane. So there's kind of like more over here than there is over there. So I'm doing more on this side. That's one of the biggest things. Don't scrape with your brain. Always scrape with your eyes, okay? So whatever your eyes tell you needs to be scraped. And the only other caveat there is just because a spot is, a, is screwed up as a problem, doesn't mean you need to scrape it. Sometimes, I mean, if this is too thin, I actually need to scrape up here to make this thicker again, right? So don't make the mistake many people make where they say the problem's right there and they scrape there. Now, if the problem's there, scrape up here. So 
I'm just evening it back out. Further refining. Another helpful strategy, draw a pencil line in the middle so you can envision that. Straight right side of the pencil line, left side. And the way I'm scraping, I mean, I'm barely going to remove that pencil line. So it's actually not going to change much. In some ways, I'm scraping more over here than I am actually right along the spine. I mean, I'm getting it. You can see the line is gone. But I'm never scraping flat. That would just destroy the spine really quickly. Give you a parking lot. Don't want that close. Continuing to sort of massage it, see if I can get those sides to close. It's getting a little more diamondy. Not great, but better than it was. Tip's quite thick, actually. You can see that thickness kind of head on. We could definitely do more there. But the way it responds in other registers other than the low register makes me think that's just not the issue. It's not responding in the low register because it's still just too hard and strong, there's too much cane. The crow generally doesn't tell me much. Um, sometimes I just like what I just did, I was wondering if it was going to be too hard. And it felt better. I'm just trying to see how hard it is. Now, maybe something else you can do is put your lips above the first wire. So back here. That'll give you a pitch. So that's a G, pretty high still. So that just tells me there's a lot of cane on the reed. Could be sharp and unresponsive because of that. Nice try. Now the lobby flat is flat. So, 
it passed the low B flat test barely. All right, so that was good. Um, it goes down kind of. Uh, this is the one that I think we have the least settled, actually. Because what I notice is, so the half whole notes, the Gs in both octaves are really finicky. They kind of want to crack. The high B flat kind of wants to spread and crack. Nothing really wants to sit up, okay? So that's usually a function of kind of like not having great diagonals, sort of. Does the reed go down? I mean, is there, you know, think of stacks of triangles, you know, ascending. Um, you know, we really need a spine, a narrow spine, and then one tier down, another triangle, and another triangle, and another triangle. Then you have the rest of the reed. So this reed doesn't really have that stack of triangles. It's all kind of in the same horizontal plane. So again, we need that vertical plane. That would help those G's center, help the high B flat center. And in order to get that, we're gonna to have to take cane off. So that would help continue to make the response better. Um, so that's really what I'm going to be looking for next time. Better tapers, stronger tapers. Already I can see, oh yeah, there's stuff in there. That could all come down. See that here to here would come down. See that? That's basically in the same plane as this stuff. They're all in this plane together. This could be lower, it could be down here. All right now it's up here and then it could be down there. It's just gonna help it. It's gonna help the tip opening. We still kind of have that new reed tip opening. It's not particularly dark, but it's also not the brightest. So I'm reluctant to take the sides down. I wanna do as much of this 3D architecture as I can without taking the rails down any further. I want to keep the rails. That's what's going to give me flexibility and dynamics. But that's what I'm thinking I'll be doing mostly on day three. So we got most of this going. It barely passed the low B flat test, but it passed. I'm getting the sense that this read is good for today. Um, let me, um, you know, I know what I want to do next time. I'm just going to play on it a little bit more in stuff that it can handle. And then I'll go into day three. Oh yeah, here's the tip opening again. It's getting more diamondy, but it's still just pretty open. Ooh, just doesn't respond down there. So I'm not gonna play any full red range scales. I might play.
this is about where I want to. So already it's hardened up, no longer passes the low B flat test. You can see the tuner was moving up a little bit. That means it's sharp. So already we've got room to work on it, but I'm going to save that for next time. See, I just sort of played it in a little bit, beat it up. Didn't play Tchaikovsky 4 where it's going to sound terrible because it doesn't sit up at all. It'd make me bite. it make me over, you know, blow. It would make me tense up, all that. Um... You know, you just sort of play stuff that'll beat it up a bit. Um, I always rinse my reed off, so I dunked it again. Get any lip gunk off of it. All right, and then blow it out. And then dry it off. Again, still some moisture there. Just dry it off on your pants. And now it's clean, and I'm going to let it dry. Now it has jeans on it. But, yeah. That's it, so that's day two. And I uh, will see you next time for day three.